you've probably heard of AI image editors like Nano Banana or Sea Dream, which allow you to edit photos just with a text prompt. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could do the same thing, but for videos? And wouldn't it be even better if it was free and open source? Well, that's exactly what we're going over today. So this is, as far as I know, the first open source semantic AI video editor. It's called Lucy Edit by Descartes, and this allows you to micro edit existing videos just with a text prompt. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the cool things that it can and cannot do. And of course, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to install this on your computer so you can use it for free and unlimited times offline. Let's jump right in. All right, so first of all, here are some of their official demos. As you can see, you can easily change the color of something or insert or swap out or remove different objects in the video or even replace entire characters in the video. This is a super flexible tool. You can turn this lady into a polar bear and notice that for the most part it does preserve her pose although it's not entirely perfect so there are remnants of this woman's fingers over here. But other than that it does retain you know her original pose throughout the video. Now, instead of changing her into a polar bear, you can keep her, but also insert this strange looking dolphin beside her like this. Now, those are some of their examples, which might be cherry picked. So let me show you some of my personal demos as well. All right, so on the left is the input video. And then for the prompt, I put turn her dress and his suit white. And indeed, it proceeds to change both their outfits to white. Notice that everything else remains the same. Their poses, their faces, and even the words the end at the end remain the same. All that's really changing is the color of their outfits. So this is really good at, first of all, understanding what you want to change in your prompt and actually micro editing only that part in the video. However, notice that there is some noise and distortion added. So for example, if you notice in the bottom right corner, this was generated by Minimax's high law. That's why there's a watermark there. Notice that after plugging it through Lucy Edit, it kind of messes up the text of the watermark. So it does introduce some noise into the generation. It's not really good at preserving text or extremely fine details in your video. All right, here's another example where on the left is this input video, and for the prompt, I told it to turn the man into Iron Man. And again, it's able to understand my prompt and completely turn him into Iron Man while keeping the rest of the video relatively unchanged. However, if you look at the screen, some details of the gameplay are a bit blurred out. So again, it's not great at completely preserving fine details. But for the most part, this still is pretty good. Now let's take this a step further. I'm going to take my new Iron Man video and then prompt it further by adding a parrot on his shoulder. And again, it's able to execute this pretty well. It indeed adds a parrot on his shoulder while keeping the rest of the video the same. Here's another example where I want to change the outfit of this character. So for the prompt, I put make her wear a maid dress. And that's indeed what it does. Notice that this is quite a tricky pose. She is taking off her glasses and then brushing her hair aside, but it's able to retain this entire action in the video and only just change her outfit into a maid dress. Now, instead of just swapping her outfit, let's just completely change her into a dinosaur. And here's what we get. Now, obviously, this is a bit trickier. I guess a dinosaur wearing glasses isn't in its training data, so it failed to generate this dinosaur taking off a pair of glasses. But other than that, the pose is the same as the original video. So I'll give it some points for that. And the dinosaur is still wearing this handbag. Here's another example where I wanted to turn this dog into a cat. And that's indeed what we get. Now notice there are some limitations here. For example, the mouth movements of the dog are not transferred over to the cat. You can see the cat isn't really speaking. Also notice there are some subtle changes to the coffee as well as the watermark in the bottom right corner. So it's not perfect at preserving all the details. Now, instead of changing the dog into a cat, let's change something else. So I told it to replace this cup of coffee into a plate of cake. And here is what we get. And it executed this pretty well. So if there's any video where you want to replace a particular object in the video, 
with just the text prompt, this is currently the easiest way to do it. You don't need to mask anything out or do any like manual stuff. All you need to do is prompt this AI and it will magically execute the change for you. Now there are some limitations to this. It's not really good at converting a video into different art styles. So for example, if I input this real photo of a woman playing the violin and I get it to turn this into anime style, notice it kind of failed to generate this very well. The background and the character kind of just changed completely. And then here's another example where I tried to get it to turn this into Disney Pixar style and again it just failed to generate this accurately. Like the entire scene is somehow changed into something else. Anyways that's just one of the major limitations I've hit with this but those are some of my quick tests. For the most part it's really good at replacing characters or changing the outfit of someone or adding or replacing objects to an existing scene. All right, next let's go over where and how you can use this. So first of all, you can try this out completely for free online. I'll link to this page in the description below where you can sign up for free just with your email or Google account and you get 2000 credits to play around with. And then over here is where you would upload a video and then type in your prompt to specify what you want to change. For example, we can do something like this. Now notice that, at least for this online platform, they offer two different versions, a pro version and a dev version. The dev version is the free and open source one, which I'll go over in a second on how to install this locally. And I assume the pro version is slightly better and this is closed source and you can only use this through their platform. And then over here is where you can select the resolution. So a 480p generation would cost 75 credits while a 720p resolution video would cost 150 credits. Again, you get 2000 credits to start with, so it's more than enough for a few generations. Now that's how you can use it online. Next, I'm going to show you how you can install this on your computer so you can run it for free for unlimited times offline. So I'll link to this page in the description below. This is a GitHub repo on how you can use Lucy Edit using ComfyUI. If you're not familiar with ComfyUI, this is basically the most popular platform for running open source image, video, and audio tools offline. It's completely free for you to download and use. In fact, if you haven't heard of ComfyUI, definitely see this video where I go over how to install and use it. Anyways, here I'm going to assume you already have ComfyUI installed. Now, if you scroll down to the quick start section, first we need to clone this repository into the custom nodes folder. Speaking of AI tools, you've got to check out LoveArt, the sponsor of this video. LoveArt is the ultimate creative tool powered by AI. You can get it to create posters, media kits, app designs, and even entire video commercials with sound. They've recently added this infinite canvas feature with Nano Banana, which makes it extremely easy to create and edit assets. For example, I can drag and drop these images plus this model, and then just drag to select all of them and then press tab to chat with it. So let's get this woman to wear all the items on a black background. And here is what we get. Now let's select this output and then again press tab and prompt it to make a video of her walking in the city. And here's what we get. This infinite canvas makes it so easy to design, edit, and merge assets. It's also easy to create product endorsements. For example, I can just upload this photo of Ronaldo plus this sports drink and get him to hold the sports drink. And here's what we get. Here's another example where I can upload these four images and add all of them in a modern living room. And here's the result. Here are some other cool use cases. You can simply draw a post sketch like this and transform it into a perfect fight scene or take a drawing and turn it into a professional interior design photo. The possibilities are endless. LoveArt is the ultimate AI platform for design and it's so easy to use. Try it for free via the link in the description below. So I'm going to open up my ComfyUI folder and then go into the custom nodes folder. And then afterwards at the top here, I'm going to type in CMD to open this folder up in my command prompt. 
And then afterwards to clone this repository, I need to scroll up here and click on the screen code button and then copy this URL. And then afterwards back in my command prompt, I'm going to type git clone and then paste in the URL and then press enter. So as you can see now, it's proceeding to clone this Lucy edit comfy UI folder within my custom nodes folder. So once this is done, if you open up your custom nodes folder, you should see Lucy edit comfy UI down here. All right, now the next step is to use pip to install all the requirements for this package. Now the instructions here aren't actually written very clearly. What you actually need to do is go within this ComfyUI folder first, because right now we are still in this custom nodes folder. So let's type in cd to change the directory to lucy-edit dash comfy UI, which is basically the name of our folder and then press enter. Now, after we are within this folder, then we can use pip to install all the requirements. So let's copy this line and then paste it in here. All right, so after that is done, the next step is to download the model weights. Now, there are two different models you can use. Notice that the full model is 20 gigabytes in size, so you'll need at least 24 gigabytes to run this. Fortunately, they released a smaller, more compressed FP16 version, which is only 10 gigabytes, so in theory, you should be able to run this with like 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So to make sure this doesn't kill my GPU, I'm going to go with this fp16 version so let's click on this and this is going to prompt me to download this safe tensors file and this should go in comfy ui and then in models and then in diffusion models so let's click save again note that this is 9.3 gigabytes in size so it's going to take a while to download now, while this is downloading, we can already go ahead and start up Comfy UI. So I'm going to start it up. The nice thing about Comfy UI is you don't need to build this workflow from scratch. You can just drag and drop a pre-built workflow onto your interface. So here it says they have given us a local workflow, which you can access over here. So let's go back to our custom nodes folder and find Lucy edit. And then in examples, you should see this basic Lucy edit dev JSON file. So all we need to do is drag and drop this onto our interface. And here is what we get. Now, the first thing we need to do is load up the models. Now, in addition to Lucy edit, note over here that we also need to download several other models. So first of all, let's also click on this link to download the VAE, which basically handles the encoding and decoding of the video. So this goes in models and then in VAE. You can see that I already have this here and this is 1.3 gigabytes in size. And then afterwards, we also need to download this text encoder. So let's click on this link and this goes in models and then text encoders. Notice that I already have this here and this is almost 6.6 .6 gigabytes in size. All right, after that is done, let's load up the models in this load model section. So for each model dropdown, simply click into it and then select the model you downloaded. If you don't see your model on this list, simply press R to refresh the list. So for example, for the first one, we are going to select Lucy edit. And then for the load clip, we are going to select this one. And then for the VAE, we are gonna select one 2.2. Now this workflow might seem very complicated, but there are only a few sections which you need to worry about. First of all, here is where you would upload your video to change. So for example, I'm gonna upload this video of some woman talking. And then over here is where you can specify the width and the height of your output video. And if it's not in the same dimensions as your input video, you can also decide how you want to resize this. And then over here is where you would specify the frames per second, as well as the duration of your output video. Notice that your output video is not gonna automatically match the duration of your input video. So for example, if this is like 10 seconds at 24 frames per second, then you're gonna have to change this value to be 24 times 10, which is 240. Otherwise, the default of 81 is basically going to output only the first three seconds of this clip. So anyways, here is where you would set the duration. Make sure you actually set it to the duration of your video in seconds times the frames per second. Anyways, for me, I'm just going to leave this at 81 divided by 24 frames per second, which is roughly three seconds. And then over here is where you would enter your prompt describing the change you want to make in the video. So for example, let's change her shirt to a red dress. 
Note that in their GitHub repo, they also provide some prompting guidelines for you. It's best to use these trigger words like change, add, replace, or transform to. And then here are some other best practices. Just to keep it simple, we're just going to change her shirt to a red dress. And then here is another node which you should pay attention to. It's the K-Sampler node, which you should be familiar with if you've been watching my other ComfyUI tutorials. But anyways, the step count is basically the number of, well, steps you want the AI to go through before outputting your final video. In general, the more steps you have, the higher quality your generation will be, but it's also going to take longer to generate. And also at a certain point, you're going to get diminishing returns. So if you set this value to too high, then you're just going to be wasting compute with no added benefits. Conversely, if you set this to a lower number, it's going to generate faster, but at the sacrifice of some quality. And then CFG is basically how literally you want the AI to follow your prompt. A higher CFG value would take this really literally, whereas a lower CFG value would add more creativity and variance to your generation. And then the sampler name and scheduler, these are basically different algorithms used to generate the video. There are a ton of different algorithms you can choose from, and they each have subtle differences. Let's just leave it at the default. And that is pretty much it. Those are all the most important settings that you should be aware of. Anyways, let's click run. Now notice that when I run this, you might see this error where there's a mismatch. So it received float, but it should be integer. And it seems like the error is over here. So what I'm gonna do is actually remove this connection because it's saying that it's receiving a float, but it's expecting an integer. And instead, what we're gonna do is just set this manually to 24 like this. So after that, it should work. Let's press run again. All right, perfect. So you should hear my GPU firing up. And then afterwards, here is what we get. So at least for me, the preview video is very cropped. So what I need to do is actually right click on this and open the video in a new tab. And indeed, it changes her shirt into a red dress. For your reference, this generation of 3 seconds took like 15 minutes to generate. Also, for your reference, this video is already automatically saved in your output folder. So it's just in ComfyUI and then output and then video and you should see your output video over here. So that is how you can get Lucy Edit up and running on your computer. I think this is the first and only open source AI video editor which allows you to edit videos with a text prompt just like Nano Banana for images. And this unleashes a ton of creativity. If there's a video with certain elements which you don't like, you can just edit it with a text prompt. Anyways, that sums up my review and installation tutorial of Lucy Edit. Let me know in the comments what you think of this, and if you run into any errors during the installation, also welcome to paste the error message in the comments below, and I'll try to help you troubleshoot as much as possible. As always, I will be on the lookout for the top AI news and tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, there's just so much happening in the world of AI every week, I can't possibly cover everything on my YouTube channel. So to really stay up to date with all that's going on in AI, be sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.